thank you all. Um, it's fun to be back here and, uh, and see everybody and hear all the interest uh, level. S still so high in how to make movies either on your own or with a group or, or whatever, <coughs> trying to find the new tools. And Philip's always got something up his sleeve. And he always. <laughs> he's, uh, he's on the, on the cutting edge. Um, so I started Two Pop because I was really excited about the digital revolution in 1999, 2000. And uh, I was one of the first people, though, to cut on the Avid. And that's how I got involved with, with, with Final Cut, because Randy Billows had come down to my cutting room. Oh, for a long time he was visiting when he was at Adobe still. And he started telling me about this new program that he was going to build, and it was, it was called Key Grip at the time. And, um, you know, I was just jazzed because I was a young, I was an assistant still, and I knew those Moviola's day, Moviola days were over, and uh, my dad had been an editor, and uh, I knew that we were coming to a time when, you know, it just wasn't going to happen on film anymore. But I always uh, was terrified of videotape because it involved a lot of numbers. <laughs> And I'm not a numbers guy. I wish I was more of a numbers guy. But uh, so I skipped over. I, I stayed in film. I was an assistant film editor for 10 years uh, on features and TV, mostly features. And then I saw this Avid, and I said, that's going to be you know, what my life is about if I want to continue to be an editor. And uh, again, I kind of uh, did a lot of early work on that. And, uh, and, when, and, and when Final Cut came along, I mean, I was just so jazzed because the early Avids were like $150,000. And then there was this program that was going to come along for, I think, what was it, $999 at, at the beginning? And it was just like, wow, this is going to change everything. This is going to put the power of communicating with video in everybody's hands. And to me, that's a really important thing. Uh, you know, um, the craziness going on on YouTube and what have you, notwithstanding, it's, 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 it's at the very least a way for everyone to express themselves. So I was excited about that. And, um, and I worked with Final Cut. I cut, a, I cut a feature or two on it and uh, up until about seven. And then what happened was my rigor mortis of being an avid editor kind of started to set in. And Final Cut Pro 10 changed uh, in a big way. And I'll be frank, I wasn't about to learn a new piece of software to do my primary work. And I've played with it. Uh, I don't understand it entirely, but I, I enjoy playing with it. I, I enjoy playing with Adobe Premiere. Uh, I think that, that's a, a wonderful program. All the Adobe programs at this point are, are really, boy, they've come up a big notch. And, uh, okay, so the crux of the biscuit is Richard and I were working on this film that we just finish, finished, which is called Naked. It's going to be on Netflix on August 11th, so everybody can stream it. You got your volume up on that? It's uh, starring Marlon Wayans, and it's a totally different thing for Marlon. It's still crazy and everything, but he's, uh, it's kind of a sweet romantic comedy. And uh, Richard had created this thing called, um, well, it was a file, FileMaker Pro database. And what it essentially was, was a digital code book. And I thought it was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen. Because I used to do a code book by hand with paper. And Richard was like flying in, file, uh, in, in FileMaker. And he had the whole show in this file. And when I say the whole show, you have to understand, because of the digital revolution, one of the I guess you could say downsize sides for editorial is uh, there's massive amounts of footage. They never turn off the camera. They used to say cut, and then they wouldn't print everything because it was film and it was expensive. But now they just keep the camera rolling because digital's cheap. So on this film, we had 130,000 hours of dailies. A hundred, 130 hours of dailies. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got completely shit faced drunk before I got here, and I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> 130, I'm thinking in footage, 130,000, 130 hours of daily, which is five or six days of, of, of just film. 
So, uh, not, you know, 130 hours notwithstanding, it's a, it's a lot of material. And Richard had to keep track of all that. And we all, as assistant editors or editors, have to keep track of our footage and the metadata that now goes along with it, obviously. So we got to talking and we thought, we really need to teach people the workflow on a feature film because that's not something that's really taught in, in film school. They teach you how to edit. And I don't, let me see, how many people consider themselves editors of some sort here? Okay. How many people work as assistant editors professionally? Okay, so you know the drill. There's a lot of stuff to keep track of. And um, Richard had this great database and we thought, why don't we put together a course that can really teach what goes on in Hollywood in, in, in the major production centers. When I say Hollywood, it could be anywhere. It could be New York, London. Um, when, when you make a feature film, independent, large scale, what have you. Um, now there's, there's always a little bit of controversy. Uh, if you ask any, almost any professional film editor working on a major studio or independent film or television, how do I become a film editor? Um, they'll tell you that the best way to become a, a film editor on major films like the John Wicks or the films you see in the theaters or on Netflix is to become a really good assistant editor. Now, for some people that might be a bit of a letdown. For others, it's a career path. Um, I spent, like I said, 10 years as an assistant editor. And that's why we created Master the Workflow. Basically, what uh, Richard and I put together is um, a first of its kind training, like I told Michael. Uh, it's been a world that most people have a, had a really t hard time getting into, and they still do. But if you want to become a professional film editor and work on big Hollywood films and television shows, and now with the cable revolution and the streaming revolution, I mean, Apple's going to be producing material. Uh, obviously, Netflix is a monster. Uh, and there's a, lo a lot more work out there. You need to get trained in the workflow. We've worked for you know, companies like you know, the big studios. I've done, I've done films for every major studio. So we felt we were pretty we were pretty well qualified to kind of put together this training course. Uh, it's based on real world experience. We just created our most recent project, like I said, Naked for Netflix. I'm gonna and let Richard take over and, and talk a little bit about um, who Master the Workflow is for. Hi, I'm Richard. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, who, is the mas who is Master the Workflow for? First off, uh, if you're a student, you're fresh out of film school, you've worked on student films, uh, maybe you didn't even go to film school, like me, I didn't go to film school, but you're motivated to start cutting, you've read, you've read in the blink of an eye, and now you need, uh, you need some, uh, some more insight on the nuts and bolts of the process. This, pro this class is for you. Are you a new assistant editor? You've been working in perhaps short form promos, perhaps you've been working in unscripted, I started there. Uh, perhaps you're working in scripted television. New assistant editors, you're still uh, a little wet behind the ears, you want to get a little uh, insight on some workflow, this is for you. Are you an experienced assistant editor and you're looking to transition into features? We all know how insular the worlds can be. It's very difficult to transition from reality to uh, scripted television to feature films. My biggest hope with this class, the way I, I, the way I like to describe it is early on in my career when I was making the transition out of unscripted into scripted, uh, I certainly know I lost a few job interviews because they would ask me about something and I was staring at them mouth open and shivering. I don't <laughs> want that to happen to you and uh, if you're a little experienced, if you're still looking to make that transition, this class is for you. If you're already well experienced, you already know what you're doing, but you're just looking for more workflow tips, I find the biggest value of being an assistant editor, I've been an assistant editor for nine years, longer than most of my colleagues by many standards, but I still think there's an awful lot of value in the more people you work with, the more, the more workflow you take from people, you amalgamate your process, and I never, I never do the same project twice because I always learn cool things per project by jumping on our workflow, seeing what, how the way I work, I'm hoping that you'll find what you need, find some things that help you out, maybe some things I do you don't like, but if you're an experienced assistant editor looking for more workflow tips, this class is for you. And finally, 
Anyone looking for insight on how to organize, manage, or turn over a feature film, especially if you're an editor, a lone wolf editor working on an independent project, and perhaps you don't have an assistant editor, and perhaps you haven't assisted edited in a long time, in which case the assistant editing process has changed drastically, this will be a great opportunity for you to gain a little bit of insight on what we're doing as assistant editors and what we have to do to hand it off to you to make you a more self-sufficient editor. Now, what makes Master the Workflow unique? There are a myriad of programs out there. There's a myriad of books out there. The biggest thing is that Master the Workflow is not just about the software. You can get training courses that teach you how to use Avid, that teach you how to use Premiere, that teach you how to use Final Cut, and that's great, and it's imperative that you know how to use the software, but whether you're working in television or features, again, this, project, this class is directed at features. There is so much more to know than just the software. We're going for full workflow, from pre-production to final delivery. How do you utilize your relationships? For example, coming from Unscripted, when I started working in Scripted, I didn't know who the script supervisor was, what they did, or why I needed to talk to them. Now I know they are the single most important person the assistant editor can know. Translating your current working knowledge. Again, this class is based on, you've been working for a little while, you know what you're doing, but Perhaps you don't know the terminology that's going to be necessary in the feature workflow. Most of this stuff can be explained very simply, very quickly, and that's the primary aim of this class, translating your working knowledge into features. And the real benefit to this class is a step-by-step -step breakdown of the entire editorial and post-production experience. It's always great to sit in and shadow with assistant editors, but the one thing I always felt awful about is I would have assistant editors ask to come and shadow with me, and that's great, but if I'm working in dailies, that means you get to see how I do dailies. If I'm doing turnovers, you get to see how I'm doing turnovers. You don't get to see the entire process, and sometimes the process is so hairy that I don't have time to explain it to you while you're sitting with me. With this, this class, we're going to break down the entire process. You're going to be sitting over my shoulder the entire time, and I'm going to be breaking it down in steps. And finally, this is work created by current working professionals. Larry's been doing this for... A hundred years. <laughs> 36 years. Uh, long time. I've been doing this for, for nine years. It's 45 combined years of experience. And some of the topics that we're covering in Master the Workflow. Defining terms and concepts. Again, this is one of those things is, regardless of whether you've gone to film school, I find that, that terminology is a very flexible thing. A lot of people use the same words, or rather they use different words when they use the same thing. Case in point, if someone asks you if you know scripter, I absolutely lost a job because I didn't know what scripter was, but I knew what script sync was. I wish I knew they were the same thing then. Um, the initial meeting with your editor. Before you even get the job, you're going to meet with your editor and you're going to find out if you're a good fit personality-wise and also just getting a feel for you know, your, your sense of familiarity with the process. And I'm going to break down you know, what, are, what are some things you want to talk to with your editor. When, one, when you first meet your editor before you get hired. And once you get hired onto the job, before you've even met with your production, there's a million things you're going to want to ask your editor. For example, how do they set up their room? How do they set up their system? All of these questions can prepare you for that situation. Where are the good lunch places? That's a, good, that's a biggie. <laughs> Setting up the cutting room, which I touched on a little bit before. Again, every editor has the way they like to work, and by knowing these questions in advance, this is going to make you more prepared for that situation. Does your editor like a continuity wall? What direction do they want their desk facing? Do they want the windows covered up with duvetine? All these things are very valuable to know. I mean, you know, excuse me, but they, you know, some of these things, they sound a little mundane, but these things are really important to the team, when you're working with directors, you're working with producers, you're gonna be locked in those rooms for eight months, a year. It's, it's sort of like the nuances, I think, what Rich is talking about. Absolutely, and you know, for, especially for people working in Unscripted, because again, I started in Unscripted, organizing and utilizing the paperwork. The first time somebody asked me for a continuity, I told them, well, it starts at the beginning and it ends at the end. Uh, a <laughs> little bit more to it than that. Um, so, um, that's well. I'm going to break down all of the paperwork. How do you utilize it? And again, some of the paperwork and how you use it is not entirely obvious. So I'm going to break down all of that process. You know, from the camera reports to the sound reports to the uh, to the call sheets. Line script. Line script. Line script's a biggie. And I'm going to break down the relationship between editorial and production. Again, 
Coming from Unscripted, these are a lot of things that I never dealt with other than the fact that I was angry at production all the time. Um, but uh, again, in, in a feature workflow where there's going to be a lot of back and forth conversation, especially between the assistant editor and the script supervisor, there's also a lot of things to know. For example, you don't necessarily want to jump to the highest levels first. You don't go directly to the DP. They're busy. I'm going to break down these relationships and how it concerns you as an assistant editor. And again, on the whole, we're breaking down the entire post-production pipeline from your pre-production meeting at the beginning to the final stages of DI and mastering. And in the case of Netflix, uh, which is a new and emerging process, their, uh, their turnover requirements are quite unique. And so we'll go all over all of these things in great detail. Other topics we're gonna deal with is project structure. This is one of those things where, of course, you can take it or leave it. There's a million different ways to organize a process, but we're going to show you how we did it on this film and how the film was successful by it. Again, it's another one of those situations where you can take what works for you, you can throw away what doesn't work for you, and it's just another option. It's another way of seeing how another person works. We're also going to break down media storage, which goes beyond just your avid ISIS, but also how we back things up and how we label things. Very important, because once you turn that film over, it needs to be in a way where people can get to it and understand how things are organized and where they are. Otherwise, you're gonna be getting a lot of phone calls and those are always fun. No, they're not. Dailies. This also seems mundane, but it goes without saying. If, you, if you're if you coming from an unscripted world or even in television, there's just a, a, a myriad of different ways of labeling things. So this is gonna be an opportunity for you to get a little insight on how we organize our project. Temp elements. Organizing and databasing sound effects, music, VFX, and ADR. And uh, assemblies, outputs, and versioning. Just keeping track of your cut as it moves along. These are, uh, these again, is another thing where there is really not a right or wrong way to do these things. There are good ways and bad ways, and we're gonna talk about how we did it, why it worked, and why it'll probably work for you. And Lastly, the digital codebook, which as Larry said, it's a biggie. I've been working on my database for about two years and I'm very proud of it and uh, we'll go over that. And uh, uh, we're gonna deal with working with vendors, how to spot sound, how to spot music, visual effects. Working in, uh, in Unscripted, first time I heard about a spotting session, I didn't know what they were talking about. So these are all things that will be very valuable to you. Previews and test screenings and the stress that goes with them. <laughs> Um, finishing turnovers, outputs, change lists, change lists. If you've worked in television, change lists never happen in television with few exceptions. Change lists, the first time I was asked to do one, I was shivering. I had no idea what it was. We'll break down the process with you. It's very simple. And uh, like I mentioned in brief detail before, the digital intermediate and final delivery. What are those last bits, again, when you're at the end, you're out of money, and everyone's asking you for a million things at once? How do you deal with that? How to get into the union and the requirements. This is a simple one, but it's, it's interesting how uh, there's, there's a constant amount of questions. I also serve with the FA Board of Directors, and it's a common question. What do I need to get into the union? We'll demystify all of that for you. Editing room protocols and diplomacy. This is a topic that is not one that's talked about that often, and it's extremely important. And you'll find the larger the budget project you work on, the more important that diplomacy will play. And we'll just talk about, again, this comes down to relationships and reading the rooms, but this is one thing, this is a topic that I haven't seen really in any books, and it is a very difficult topic to cover because much of it kind of has to be learned on your own, and it's all about reading people but we're gonna break down our perspective working on this film and through our past experiences working assistant editors and editors. And next, I'm gonna play you a sample from uh, our recording. The next term I wanna familiarize yourself with is a rebalance. A rebalance will never happen in television, but it will happen in film. And what a rebalance is, is Going back to the reels, which is the way you cut a film, you're gonna have a certain number of scenes within a certain reel. Just to make this simple, I'm gonna say we have 10 scenes in reel one and 10 scenes in reel two. So, knowing that your reel should be approximately 20 minutes, you have scenes one through 10 in reel one 
in scenes 11 through 20 and reel 2. And through the editorial process, you're cutting reel 1 and it starts to get a little short. So reel 1 gets down to 16 minutes. And you say, reel 1's a little short. We should probably take some scenes out of reel 2, put them into reel 1, just to get their lengths about even again. By moving a scene out of reel 2 into reel 1, that's called a rebalance. When that happens, especially if you're in turnovers, you're going to have to deliver what's called a rebalance lift. We'll get to that later. I just want you to know what a rebalance is, since that's something you'll never see in television. So that's just one example. That actually comes from our terms and concepts uh, lesson, which again, we, we start the class off just trying to give you a good foundation, just terms and concepts that you're likely to hear. And moving on, some of the added bonuses. Again, I will be providing you my database, and a large part of our module is I'm going to break down how to use this database because there's an awful lot to go through it. Uh, this database tracks absolutely everything that I do paperwork-wise. It tracks, it is the literal code book. I track incoming footage. I track our continuities in there. I do measurement charts. I do visual effects tracking. I do our ADR list, our music cue sheets, uh, and I keep logs of our turnovers, and I even keep a hard drive log because I hate when I lose cables, and I like to know where they are when I lost them. Um, this will all be given to you, and uh, that's, uh, that's uh, one of the added bonuses. And I'll let Larry take over. Sure. Yeah. Um, we're going to have a, pr a private Facebook group, so uh, you, know, you can be in touch with us. And uh, particularly Richard, he's obviously uh, demonstrated what an expert he, he is at this stuff. Uh, we're also going to have a member's referral database after uh, you've completed the training. Uh, we'll have a short interview with you, uh, and we'll create, we're creating a database who uh, we could then refer you to other editors that we know, uh, and uh, hopefully that will be of, of value to people. Okay, so how much does something like this cost? Uh, obviously, it runs the gamut. There are courses out there for $99, and there are some avid training courses out there for $2,000. Uh, the regular price uh, is for payments of uh, $297 or $997 uh, if you pay all at once. Uh, founding members pre-launch special, which is what we are going to be launching. Uh, we're talking about it tonight. It will be up on the internet um, next week. Uh, we'll be limited to the first 50 people so we can actually, uh, you know, you know, handle the amount of, of information and, and questions. Uh, will be 40% off. It's four payments of 187 or 597. Uh, again, uh, that you would save uh, some money doing that. Uh, we are partnering with Ace on this, the American Cinema, Cinema Editors. We're going to be media sponsors at EditFest this year. We're getting a lot of nice feedback from from educational institutions. And um, we want to train the next generation of assistant editors and film editors. So take out your phones, go to masterworkflow.com, and sign up because we've got a bunch of free material up there that just talks about you know, uh, what the course is about and then you know, tips and, and, and tricks, uh, PDF downloads, things like that. And um, what else? How about some questions? Sure.